Hi, hello, welcome, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess. I'm sorry, Nigel is napping. And this is the face you get when you wake him up. But today, I know you see that I have a different setup. I'm trying to figure out where exactly I wanna film. Sometimes I might change it up. I'm sure you were tired of seeing my Christmas tree, so I didn't film downstairs. But today I wanna to reflect, look back on my reading year. I finished my last read of 2020 last night, and this year has been the best reading year um, of my adult life by quality and quantity. So I'm super proud that I wanted to go through my Goodreads year in review just because it's convenient. I also didn't do a wrap up for November and December. So I just wanted to go through some of the books that I read this year and talk about the highs and lows. I also like kind of did some statistics on books I read by black authors, by queer authors, books that are nonfiction, fantasy, adult, young adult, kind of go through those numbers and see where I want to improve next year. So um, let's go ahead and go through it. Okay, so I have got my Goodreads pulled up and look at my year in books. So I read 105 books this year, which is the most I've ever read in adulthood. And that was 41,629 pages. And so it told me my shortest book, which was The Tess, a novella by Sylvain Nouvelle, which I really enjoyed. And my longest book, of course, was Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. Average length of books, 396 pages. Now, this is what is so shocking to me. My average rating was a 4.1. That has never happened before. I am such a stingy, I am stingy with my stars. My average rating on Goodreads, I think is 3.7, 3.6 maybe. But my average rating for this year is 4.1. I've read some really amazing books and I think it helped that I DNF'd books I wasn't feeling it. So most popular was Hunger Games. I did a reread this year. Least popular was Sisters in Hate, one of my nonfiction reads, which I definitely recommend that uh, more people read. And then highest reading is Words of Radiance, which I don't know how I feel about that. And my first review started off with The Wives, which was an interesting thriller from Taryn Fisher. And so going through, I, in my last video I talked about starting my year off, I read Anna Karenina, and I'm still surprised that I read other books in January because that one seemed to take so much time. But Get a Life, Chloe Brown was definitely one of my favorites this year. I still think about it. Star Sight was a sequel to Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, and I loved it even more than the first one. I I'm up to date on the second era of Mistborn and I love it. I know a lot of people don't love Mistborn era too as much, but I loved it. The last book. Oh my gosh, so many feelings. I need Mistborn. I need Mistborn 7, but I know I don't think we're getting it till 2022 maybe. I read Bunny by Mona Awad and that, I don't even know what that was. I still don't understand what that was. <laughs> Um, I read the Winter Night Trilogy this year. It was amazing. I have not like read a trilogy or a series back to back like that in a long time, but it was so good. I'm so glad I did. And I have been slowly working. I think I started in 2018 trying to catch up on Karen Slaughter's backlist. So I finished her, um, what's it called? So it's the Grant County series. I could not remember that for the life of me. And I also want to plug that my friend Amy, I will link it down below. She did an awesome video of where to start with Karen Slaughter. And I'll explain the differences between the Grant County and the Will Trent series. Also, I tried to make my own gingerbread latte and it's strong as hell. I'm about to be bouncing off the walls. Also, I think I might've put too much ginger in it. Pray for me. I've started in order. And so I read this one series first and I finished it. And now I'm on to the will trent series um my dark vanessa it's hard for me to talk about that book because i want to say it was a good book but it was like not enjoyable it's really hard subject matter but i thought it was a well-written book um i feel like a lot of people talked about it at the beginning of the year and then i didn't hear much the seven and a half deaths of evelyn hardcastle was really fun um and then i had some in the middle that i didn't love as much daughter of the pirate king on the come up Akata Witch, I just didn't love those. I didn't love Elantris. I started Murderbot this year. I swore I started it last year, but I've been loving those books also. So many people hyped up the Sundown Motel and I thought it was dry. <laughs> I don't know. I read His Dark Materials, which was The Golden Compass, The Subtle Knife, and where's the other one? The Amber Spyglass this year and I loved it. And my first time reading it, and to me, it stood well, stood up to the test of time as an adult. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I really loved it. And I need to continue watching the adaptation on HBO. Um, the House in the Cerulean Sea, I read that twice this year. 
so good. Like I said, I reread The Hunger Games in anticipation for The Ballads of Songbirds and Snakes, which was such a disappointment. It just, it added enough. It was terrible, in my opinion. Um, I listened to Jessica Simpson's memoir, which was actually really good. If you like Jessica Simpson, like, or if you ever liked her, I think it's very interesting to listen to. She narrates it. And there was some stuff I did not know. And Strange the Dreamer was a surprise. Um, Sula by Tori Mo Morrison was really good, but really sad. Um, I'm so mad I have not con continued the Reluctant Royal series by Alyssa Cole. I need to get back on that. Obviously, ooh, this is July. I had such a good reading month in July when I read the fifth season, The Poppy War. I was rereading City of Brass, Kingdom of Copper. I read Vita Nostra which more of you need to read Vita Nostra. That was one of my two translated works. Uh, I'm gonna do better next year. Anna Karenina and Vita Nostra, which are both Russian, originally written in Russian. Vita Nostra is the blueprint for dark academia. It is fantasy, it is it's a mind fuck, it is so good. Please read Vita Nostra so we can talk about it. And then I read Empire of Gold, which was such a good finale uh clap when you land was incredible and i finished the faithful and the fallen i started the way of kings do you dream of terror 2 was a really great science fiction recommendation i got from tori morrow and take a hint danny brown i didn't love as much as i would have liked but i did enjoy it lovely war was such a good book a historical romance historical fictional romance i don't know how you say that and then i continued with nk jemison beach read mm. James Baldwin and got into some more nonfiction, but this time in the the death side I don't know I read Snow Kids in Your Eyes by Caitlin Doty and that has just really propelled me into this this world I didn't realize was where I belonged that sounds really strange I don't know how to explain it but such a good memoir and all that remains another great nonfiction about a forensic anthropologist incredible then we've got some disappointments. I'm just gonna skip right over those and kept going. I'm so torn on how I feel about Grown when I read it, like it was so fast. But then when I finished it, I was like, that was my first book by Tiffany D. Jackson. I do wanna read some of her other books. I just, I think the, the content is very important. I just do not like how literal it mirrored the R. Kelly case. And I think in the book, she even says it's like, it's not that. But I followed that for years, all the stuff R. Kelly did. I watched the documentaries, like Surviving R. Kelly. It is literally that. So it just, I wish it was different. You know, oh my God, Fallen. Wow, that was the end of the, what is it called? I can't think of what it's called. Grant County series. I With I cannot think of what the series is called, but Fallen is the final book and her first series before you start the World Trend series and it was so good, but so heartbreaking. I don't know why she did me like that. Piranesi was weird, but great. I liked Mexican but Gothic. It wasn't my favorite. Obviously, Addie LaRue. Some more nonfiction. Vanishing Half was incredible. Um, I've still been thinking about it. Oof, it was a lot. I don't know if I loved how it ended, but it still was really great. Um, Should Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers was a great novella and now I definitely need to read her Wayfarer series. Um, I started finally the Wayward Children series. Every Heart of Doorway is the first one because Tor was every day for like a week, they sent a link to a free e-copy. And so I got the first five books for free. Incredible, I've read the first three and I have loved them all, but the second one is my favorite, Down Among the Six and Bones, because Jack and Jill are my favorite. Again, Sisters in Hate, which is a nonfiction book about American women, white women, who go to the alt-right, um, to white supremacy. Because so often we think about men, but that women are a very integral part of the community too. And there is an interesting part in there about someone who used to be a booktuber, no longer on booktube anymore, and um, I guess she had some video talking about too much diversity or we don't need diversity in publishing. It's no longer up on YouTube, I don't think. And I wasn't on 
booktube at that time so I never saw it but she's mentioned in this book it's a it's very I listen to all my nonfiction now on audio and I think it's very much worth listening to I read Nevermore the Trials of Morgan Crow I've heard about this one for years and I am in love I think it's my new obsession I'm like I loved it so much I cannot wait to read the next ones I don't know how many books are supposed to be in the series three are out but Oh, it was so good and whimsical and magical and funny and I I loved it. It was great. Um, this is my America I really enjoyed. That's hard to say enjoy because the, the subject matter is infuriating. Um, but it's a really great young adult contemporary about um this young girl, her family, and her father was wrongly accused for murder, so he's in prison on death row, and she's trying to get him off of death row because his time is running out, and then her brother is framed for a murder as well so it's like that story and of course it's a black family so it's it's very relevant the nickel boys by colson whitehead i had put this off for a long time i also didn't read was it the underground railroad that was popular a couple years ago because sometimes i just it's too much and this was an excellent book but oh it was so upsetting it's based on a true story of a reform school in Florida, I believe, um, where they sent most often black boys that were too young to go to like prison. So it was basically like a juvenile hall, but they called it a reform school, but really terrible things happened there. And it's, oh, it's a short read, but it's really intense. So just be, be cautious. Um, I read The Midnight Library by Matt Haig and I really really loved this one and it was a great discussion on depression uh, but warnings for suicide, suicidal thoughts, depression and but with a fantastical science fiction um, twist to it because she basically dies and then goes to a library where there's all these books there's the endless books because it's essentially every single choice you made that led to a different life so all these regrets she has are like well do you want to try a different life maybe you can try out some of these lives and maybe you will find the one you're supposed to live in or if you don't then you'll die so it's very it's really interesting um but some of the feelings i was like you know i don't know it was really good and I read In a Holidays by Christina Lauren, which I loved so much. I was really nervous. The last two Christina Lauren releases I didn't love, but this one was so good. I will say my only criticism is there wasn't any smut, but it was okay because everything else, it was a very family oriented book. It was cozy and it wintry and I love the romance. And it was, it was great. Five stars. I loved it. I read The House with the Chicken Legs, which a friend had recommended to me in another middle grade, and it was really cute. I really enjoyed that one. Oh my god, Ring Shout! So good! So good! I've been hearing people talk about this one this year, and it's a horror novel set in the 1920s in uh, Georgia. And essentially, obviously, the KKK is a real thing, but in this, there's also they may look human, but there's some called Ku Kluxes who are actually like monsters under the skin of just a normal person. And at first it's really hard to tell and not everyone has the sight. And the book is following this group of black women who are monster hunters. It is so short, but it is so good. Like it is from start to finish, it is a masterpiece. A masterpiece. Then I finished um, my last two nonfiction, which were Stamped from the Beginning by Ibram X. Kendi and Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez. So Stamped took me a while. I think it took me 16 days. I think that's what my library hold said. I listened to the audio because I would just get so pissed and I had to stop. It sometimes can be dense, but it's necessary because of where he's starting. He's starting like back in the 1600s um, when people were coming from Europe to the United States to... Um, present day and or not present day but you know more in the real, in the last few years so some of it is dense but it's definitely useful information it all has a purpose and it's just infuriating because it goes against all of the things we were taught um so many of the things we were taught in school and at least in the u.s um public school system and just all of these things about prominent white figures who U.S. history loves to paint as like these white saviors like oh they saved black people they ended slavery they were so they were the champion for this and so much of it was if they did anything 
in favor of black people or to help black people it all had a means to an end like it was all something to further their own agendas it was very rarely if at all because they truly cared and saw black people as as equals and so so much stuff i was just like and the problem with reading this was there were so many i just kept writing down and making notes i'm like oh i want to read a book about this now and i want to read a book about this and I, i'm like i don't know what i'm gonna have time to read all these books but it is incredible i recommend audio it's really great also invisible invisible women which i heard emily fox talk about and so it says data bias in a world designed for men so it's talking about the data the gender data gap so how basically the entire world is based on data from men and from men in this like very generic i don't know 5 10 160 pound white man they base all this information on and so it could be something as small as the equation they use to configure the thermostat in office buildings or how they design seat belts like so some of it could be small or trivial but some things are actually really dangerous and can lead to increased deaths in women how they don't think about women when they construct um after a disaster hits and they reconstruct homes and i can't remember if it was in bangladesh or a certain country where there was a major disaster and a lot of people lost their homes and they were rebuilding the homes and they didn't put in a kitchen they didn't they don't have women on these panels to construct things like this they didn't think about women when the disaster of katrina hit just all these things they leave women out of the conversations out of the the panels out of the the people putting together these different things and uh so the world isn't made for us and all of the unpaid work that women do um if you have children if you are taking care of a parent and picking kids up from daycare taking them to school running to appointments all the housework is generally and this is not everybody generally women do more of and it again was infuriating i was listening to stamp and this this hold came in and i was like oh great i'll balance it out with this one no they both pissed me both pissed me off but still were incredible reads so i definitely recommend and then like i said i read the up to the third one in the wayward children series and then uh i read the ballad of black tom by victor lavelle i've heard about this one for a while it's a horror fantasy that is a play on hp lovecraft who is like a classic in the horror genre but he's also racist as hell or was racist as hell so this took one of his stories and then you know spun it and made it black and it was great short but incredible and yeah awesome so i read like i said up to last night i had some really great reads i spent december just like like in my last video i said fuck it to my books i need to read in 2020 list and i just went with whatever i read a bunch of short books hella novellas middle grade listen to audio and it was great i think i read 13 13 books in december 12 in november and it was just relaxing to end my year that way there was no stress no pressure no slogging through a tome even though i really enjoy a lot of large books sometimes i just it's so satisfying to quickly finish a book so i had such a good reading year i'm just really happy and proud of myself for reading 105 i don't think i'll ever be able to top that going forward i have a lot of things i want to accomplish and work on in 2021 so i don't know if i'll have as much time but i'm really proud for this year and so for my stats which are i could do better but the majority of my books were adult like um 68 of 105 were adult and 37 of them were fantasy 15 were sci-fi but then i also had a little bit of no i had eight non-fiction which was more than i thought and i definitely want to increase that do at least that much if not increase that next year i had some romance contemporary historical fiction i only read four which is such a shame because i love the historical fiction so i definitely want to increase that number next year um i did read a good bit of thriller mystery um police procedural so that was like 13 and I read eight horror books which is very surprising because i never really read horror before this year so i like that also but here is where i'm very disappointed in my numbers um books by black authors i read 19 but out of 105 books i could do way better um queer authors only two translated works only two books with queer main characters only have five um, and then other poc authors only have four so i definitely want to improve on those numbers um reading more nonfiction, historical fiction maybe even more middle grade 
definitely trying to increase my translated works and more works by marginalized authors. So I'm not going to put a number on it, but at least I have these numbers written down. So maybe um, a couple months into the year, I can review maybe quarterly and see where I'm at. If I've only read like one nonfiction three months in, then I'm like, okay, I need to step it up. So I am proud of this year. I I'm not gonna lie, in the beginning of the year, I still was kind of on my bullshit where I was like, whatever, I'll just read what I want. I'm not gonna pay attention to who it's by and realize that's not that's not smart. So I only really started being more cog cognizant of that kind of um, in like May forward. So I'm starting the year with that mindset and trying to be conscious of choosing books by marginalized authors and about marginalized people, just so I can expand my worldview, ex expand my reading and be able to recommend a wider range of books to you all. So I did great this year and I hope next year is just as great, if not in quantity and quality. I would like it to be the same, if not better. So that's a wrap for me in my year of books. How did you do this year? Whether you read one book or 200, it's still an accomplishment. We have had a hell of a year. So anything you did, um, be proud. So below, tell me what you read most of this year. For me, I read mostly adult fantasy. Did you read mostly young adult fantasy, middle grade, romance? Do you have any things you want to change about your reading going forward next year? And if you read any of the books I read and have any comments on them, definitely let me know. But I appreciate you so much for watching this video. This will be my last video going up for 2020. That is bonkers thank you so much for all the support and love these last six months i could not have expected to be here but i'm so grateful for every single one of you so i would appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you in my next one i'll see you next year sorry i'll see you in 2021 bye tell the people hi say hello did you have a good nap did you have a good nap let me see yeah look at all of my boogers you had a real good nap are you not gonna say hello? Hey. Oh. Are you busy? Are you busy? Okay. Okay, that was his bye-bye.